Hello friends, if you've been keeping up with my videos, you will know that I've recently shifted goals away from health focused goals because I basically achieved all my health focused goals and towards an aesthetic goal because switching goals is fun. It's what keeps your health and fitness journey interesting, keeps like a little bit of motivation going because if you have no goals, then like what are you doing? And I guess you don't have to have a goal. You can just kind of do what you do and enjoy it. I personally like having goals. I think they're fun. And my current aesthetic goal is to get a little bit leaner. So today I wanted to take you through a full what I eat in a day to promote healthy sustainable fat loss here's the thing there are so many different ways to lose fat lots of them are not healthy many of them are not sustainable there's a lot of different ways to eat that'll help you drop fat real quick but you're more than likely to gain it all back and more very quickly. Usually the faster you lose the fat, the faster you put it right back on. The approach that I'm taking is designed to optimize my health while losing fat in a way that I'm going to be able to keep it off long term and not have to like have some weird constant restriction in my life just to keep my body fat percentage lower. Like that is not good. I've also spent the better part of the last year balancing my hormones after coming off of hormonal birth control and I do not want to lose all the progress that I've made with that and oftentimes a lot of different approaches to fat loss can majorly disrupt your hormones. So trying to do this in the healthiest, most sustainable way possible. So I'm just gonna take you through a little what I eat in a day and explain to you like why I'm eating what I'm eating and when and kind of how it all ties into this sustainable healthy fat loss approach. So with that said, I'm hungry, so let's go make some breakfast. So for breakfast, I have a iced coffee smoothie of sorts. I'm gonna go through the ingredients and tell you why I handpicked each and every one to be the start of my day. First things first, the star of the show is the Four Sigmatic Coffee with Cordyceps. First, of course, it has caffeine in it. It has 50 milligrams of caffeine. Caffeine is a known exercise performance booster, but also it has cordyceps in it. Cordyceps are an adaptogen, which means they're a natural substance that helps buffer the body against stress. And cordyceps specifically is a mushroom that is really good at boosting exercise performance, boosting endurance, and boosting energy. So this in itself, like the caffeine plus the cordyceps, is an amazing amazing like pre-workout supplement. So I've been throwing this into my routine somewhat regularly. I will note I don't have the same thing every single day. This is just an example of a day. Since we're talking about adaptogens, I did also throw in maca. That's also just known to boost energy and exercise performance. It's also good for balancing hormones. So I've just been trying to keep that into my diet regularly as I continue to keep my hormones balanced. And then the next star of this smoothie is all of the carbs. We had the frozen banana, the oats, the oat milk, some carbs from the yogurt. Is that it? I think that was it. I recently made a video all about why carbs are super helpful when you're trying to achieve any sort of aesthetic or exercise related goal. So I'll link that video down in the description box below. But in short, carbs are your workout fuel. If you're going to the gym with some carbs in your system, you're gonna be able to get a little bit more out of your workout or a lot a bit more. Mm. The honey was also a carb. Threw that in last minute. And then the third star of the smoothie show is the protein. Got a little bit from that yogurt that I added, and then I threw in just a smidge of the Four Sigmatic protein. As you guys know, this is my absolute favorite plant-based protein. Like, it is my true love. Because if I got to personally curate my own protein powder based on all of my values around health and things that I like to have in my diet and things that I just like in general, it would would be this. Like I would not change a thing and that's saying something because every single other protein powder I've looked at I've been like I wish it didn't have this or I wish it had that or I wish I wish I wish. I don't wish anything about this. I just wish it was in my body. 
because it's great. It has a bunch of different sources of protein, which is amazing. It has pea, hemp, chia, pumpkin, and coconut-based protein, which means it's gonna have a wider array of amino acids. A lot of plant-based proteins that only have one source of protein don't have a full spectrum of amino acids, which is kind of inconvenient when you're trying to get the amino acids. But what really makes this one stand out is it has no gums, no fillers, no lecithins, no artificial flavors, no natural flavors, where you don't really know where the natural flavors are coming from. It has no fillers, no additives, nothing that you wouldn't easily be able to like find in the grocery store. And my last favorite thing is you guys know my love for adaptogens and my obsession session with them. I have like an almost 300 page ebook all about adaptogens. That's how much I love them. This protein powder has seven different adaptogens in it. So not only does this give you a great source of quality protein, it also gives you a bunch of different adaptogens that are going to help buffer your body against stress throughout the day. So if you're trying to get more protein into your diet, you want a good plant-based protein, highly recommend it. It also tastes good. Like most plant-based proteins taste like dirt. This doesn't. So I highly recommend it. Also recommend checking out the coffee with cordyceps. As always, if you want to check out Four Sigmatic, use my code fit and nerdy to get yourself 15 percent off. I'll link to that down in the description box below. Like I said, this exact thing is not what I have every single day. I change it up day to day, but it's usually based around the same idea. Like definitely carbs, definitely some protein, most of the time a little bit of caffeine. So I'm gonna finish drinking this, which I've <laughs> almost done already, and then it's gym time. All right, I have made it to the gym. As I told you guys last week, the program that I'm following is Brains and Gains, my fitness and lifestyle ebook. I'm doing the five day a week option and I'm currently in phase one, which is the heavy strength phase. So most of what I'm doing is like two to five reps with some more like accessory work that's like six to eight reps. And I have modified it a little bit to be more specific to like, the exact muscle groups that I want to specifically work on and ones that I don't want to develop as much, but I'm still basically like following the structure of that program. I'll link it down in the description if you want to check it out. Today is a lower body day. We're starting out with some heavy deadlifts and I'm super excited about it. I'm alone, I'm a broken home. I gave you all the bricks that I own and know. I'm letting go, I'm breaking these walls down, breaking these walls down. If you want it and you shouldn't fly to home. But if you wanna travel, then go alone Yeah, what's the point in us if I never know? Yeah, if you're gonna leave, I'ma let you go away. I'm tired of the pain Go All right, workout accomplished. That felt amazing. I PR'd on my deadlift, which is super exciting. I'm finally repping 205 again, which is what I was lifting back before I went through all of my skin stuff and had to stop lifting. Feel like I'm really getting my strength back, but I am very hungry, so we're gonna go make some lunch. So 
my lunch post-workout is basically a lot of carbs and protein and this is just to refuel my body to give it the optimal nutrition to rebuild and repair my muscles while the anabolic window is basically a myth like you don't need to eat protein within 30 minutes of exercising or else you lose all of your gains it is still important to get enough total protein in throughout the day so i like to make sure i have good quality protein immediately post-workout and then combining that with carbs not only do the carbs replenish the glycogen stores in your muscles so that they're ready to go for next time but it also helps shuttle the protein into the body a little bit more efficiently so they kind of work synergistically in the body to optimize workout recovery so i want to touch on what makes my current approach to fat loss healthy and sustainable and all of that good stuff like why this approach is not the kind of approach that's going to like tank your metabolism cause health issues throw my hormones out of balance etc etc first point is that i'm not in a calorie deficit i haven't been in a calorie deficit at all yet and i probably won't be in one for another couple weeks i've been on this fat loss journey for about eight weeks but so far i have not actively tried to lose fat the first four or five weeks were spent just shifting my macro intake but keeping my calorie intake the same so i've been eating at maintenance calories for the last eight weeks i was slowly shifted to a much higher carb diet added in a little bit more protein and thus decreased fat not because like fat is bad for goals but more because more protein and more carbs are just more advantageous for my current aesthetic goals. I'm gonna get a lot of questions about my macros, aren't I? I might as well just tell you. Hang on a second. Before I started this process at all, I was intuitively eating, and so I just tracked what I was eating intuitively for a little bit, and on average, I was eating a little over 2,000 calories, so about 2,040, 2,050-ish, averaging about 90 grams of protein, 150 grams of carbs, and 120 grams of fat. That's just, that was just me intuitively eating. I was not trying to restrict carbs. I wasn't like trying to do anything. I just love fat. My current macros of on days that I lift, I eat 2020 calories, 125 grams of protein, 245 grams of carbs, and 60 grams of fat. And then on my rest days, I eat a little bit less. I have 110 grams of protein, 210 grams of carbs, and 70 grams of fat for a total of 1,910 calories. So it took me four or five weeks to get to that point. And then for the last three or four weeks, I've just been aiming for maintenance, aiming for consistency in my eating, consistency in my training, consistency in my water intake, consistency in my sleep, and letting my body settle into this as a baseline. It's a lot harder to actively make change if you don't have a baseline from which you're changing things. It's so, so important to be trying to lose fat from a healthy baseline first. If your body's not healthy, if your metabolism is way too slow, then trying to lose fat is just gonna dig you deeper into that hole. If you want to lose weight, focus on your health first. Get that in line and then focus on fat loss. For fat loss, step one is getting healthy. That's what I'm trying to say. It's a couple hours later, I'm hungry. I want a snack. I'm gonna see what I can throw together from like various leftovers that I have in the fridge. There's just some stuff that I wanna like eat up and get rid of, so we'll see what I come up with. So my very random snack <laughs> ended up being a taco of sorts with some chicken smidge of rice on a Siete chickpea flour tortilla and a little bit of cashew cheese sauce and two kiwis. I've just been obsessed with kiwis lately. They're so good. Then I also had a Rebel Maca Mocha in the fridge, so I grabbed that as well because chocolate's delicious. Why would I not want to drink this? This is also getting me a good amount of carbs and protein and a wee bit of fat, which is perfect. This is actually really good. I'm very glad I added the cheese sauce. Amazing. I do want to quickly recognize that the way that I'm eating right now is not necessarily optimized for health. It's optimized for aesthetics. And that's not to say that the way I'm eating right now is unhealthy by any means. My diet is just less nutrient dense than it normally is when I'm focusing, like when I'm making all of my decisions purely based on health. This is basically because in order to hit my carb goals, I have to prioritize a lot less nutrient dense carbs just to be able to stomach all of the carbs. So I'm basically eating a lot more white rice than normal. Again, 
nothing wrong with white rice it's just that usually if i'm prioritizing health i would be getting my carbs from foods that also confer a wider range of nutrients basically i eat a lot more vegetables when i'm focusing purely on health and while i am now focusing on aesthetics some of the vegetables have to go or else i would be way too full and feel absolutely horrible because I would have to eat like so much fiber. So that said, this is not the way I plan on eating forever. Like right now I'm eating for a very specific goal. Once I hit that goal, I will switch to a different goal and I may eat for that goal. Eventually I will go back to intuitive eating where I will probably lean a lot more heavily on fats. And this is again why I strongly recommend prioritizing health first because if I were unhealthy and I were cutting out a bunch of vegetables from my diet and like not focusing on nutrient density, that may make my health worse, which would make fat loss a lot harder. Once you have your health locked down, you have so much more flexibility in what you can do without ending up working against your body okay i just like inhaled that taco um i asked you guys on instagram if you had any questions about this process so i'm gonna go through and answer some of them right now first one was a great question i love this are you more hungry because eating more carbs um if you saw my i tried doubling my carb intake for a week video you'll know that i did not do very well on higher carb i was like constantly like didn't want to eat, but also felt hungry the whole time. And like bad digestion wasn't good. I'm actually doing pretty darn well on this number of carbs. And I think a lot of the satiety is coming from the increased protein. Someone asked if I have cravings. No, I mean, if I do, I just kind of eat what I'm craving because I'm following more of like an IAFYM style eating without like the hardcore IAFYM like weird not healthy mentality. What do you eat when you just can't be bothered to make food? First of all, highly recommend always having some prepped food on hand. Like the chicken that I just ate was prepped chicken. When you have prepped food, it's so much easier to just throw that in a bowl, heat it up, and you're good to go. But if you don't, say you're traveling or something, my go-to is usually Chipotle or sweet green because it's so easy to just customize what you're putting in those bowls. Do you still eat sweets? Yes. You can lose weight and eat sweets. I'm gonna have chocolate tonight. Now, this is a really good question, but I think I should make a whole video on it because I could be here for like an hour talking about it. How do you accept slash love your body while wanting to change it? I think the short answer for me is that, especially because of all the health issues I went through that completely like took my physical body away from me, I was forced to dig a lot deeper to be able to love my body. Like I couldn't love my body for looking a certain way. I couldn't love my body for being strong anymore. I couldn't love my body for being pain free anymore. And so I had to like peel back layers to eventually get to the point where I love my body because it's my best friend because it's always going to be fighting for me no matter what. And wanting to change my physical appearance has nothing to do with my relationship with my body at this point. Do you have any restrictions and why? I don't eat gluten because I have celiac disease. Beyond that, I try to eat whole unprocessed foods. That's pretty much it. Current favorite everyday treats and snacks that are healthy slash productive to eat regularly. I've been loving adding more fruit to my diet. Kiwis are literally an obsession of mine right now. They're so good. Like they taste like candy. Do you intermittent fast? Honestly, I don't pay attention to what time I eat at. I might be intermittent fasting. I definitely don't intentionally do it. I say sometimes I probably do fast a little bit longer. Sometimes I only fast like 10 hours. And then there's a lot of people confused about what maintenance calories means. I'm just going to link my video in the description about how to determine your maintenance calories. It talks about like how exercise is included in that and all that and how to figure out your maintenance calories. So linked below. Thanks for the questions. They were fun. Kiwi is so good. For dinner, I have a taco bowl. Only calling it a taco bowl because I cooked the chicken and taco seasoning and then put a little bit of the chicken juice in the rice so the rice is a little bit chicken taco seasoning-y. And then <laughs> there's the veggies and some garbanzo beans. And then on the side, I'm having a kombucha, the hibiscus healer flavor, mostly because I need some more carbs. Also, I love it. So really prioritizing the protein and the carbs here again. And I do want to emphasize that even though I'm tracking, I don't feel obsessive. I don't feel restricted. It doesn't feel like a big deal to me. Like I see both tracking and intuitive eating as just tools. One is great for some things. The other one's great for other things. Like it's just a tool and I kind of enjoy doing it. Like I love puzzles and puzzling together macros is kind of fun. For now, I have a really good relationship with food and with tracking. So like we're chilling.
I finished dinner, which means it is time for dessert. Most nights I have like half a bar of chocolate for dessert. This is what I do when I eat intuitively. I know that that like satisfies my sweet tooth, satisfies my craving for chocolate, and I'm good to go. So I make sure to incorporate that into my diet as I'm tracking macros as well. Super exciting. Just got a new box from Cacao. They are a hand curated craft chocolate subscription box. I just like source chocolates every month from just like small batch chocolatiers and it's always super fun to get like surprise chocolate. Haven't opened this month yet so I'm super excited to see what's in there. I'll link them down below if you want to check them out. We got some brown butter Dick Taylor dark chocolate. Blanks are at 77% dark chocolate. Cafe Nubuntu 61% raw vegan chocolate. Ooh, that actually looks delicious. Moreau, 72% dark chocolate. And original beans at 66%. Beautiful packaging on all of them. Okay, I legit just took like five minutes looking at all these. I've decided I'm gonna have two thirds of this bar because the serving size is one third of a package. So, having two thirds. Oh, look at how cute it is. Okay, but how am I supposed to divide this into thirds? That's annoying. All right, I just went and cut it into thirds with a knife. So I have two thirds of the bar now. That was good. Kind of tastes like coffee. So this brings me to 125 grams of protein, 233 grams of carbs, and 58 grams of fat. So I'm a wee bit short on the carbs. So I think what I'm gonna do is make myself a cup of tea, which is what I usually do, and add a little bit of honey to just get a few extra carbs because tea with honey is delicious and I don't really feel like eating anything else. So that's the solution. Got my cup of tea. After this, I will have one more cup of tea because I need it for my water intake goal, but I will not be putting any honey in it, which means I am done eating for the day. Which means I think I'm gonna wrap this video up here so I can wind down, get ready for bed, do my little nighttime routine, which I will walk you through in my next video. So let me know if you have any questions about my nighttime routine and how I optimize it to maximize fat burning and muscle building potential. If you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really does support me and my channel. I really genuinely appreciate it. Please share this video with your friends, your family, and your neighbors. If you wanna see more videos from me all about health and fitness, you can check them out over here. To see future videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit the little notification bell so you get notified when I post a video and I'll see you very soon. Bye.